What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we're going to go through the full setup of the Icon slash Brain FBL setup. Now I've been asked multiple times, I, touched, I made a video on this a while back on the T-Rex 550 and I touched on a little bit of going through the menus and whatnot. So I decided that I'll make a full setup from start to finish. So we got the T-Rex 470 on the table. You guys can't see it. It's to the left of the laptop. We have a laptop set up. So this is a Icon 2 that was sent to me by Scott. Scott, thank you very much for the Icon and the Micro Beasts. They're going to get put to use. I greatly appreciate it. The Icon's already being put to use right now. So you're going to want to set your Icon up, okay? Get it to your app, plug it in, take your blades off. So now we're going to start on the main menu of the Icon software and the icon software you can download through icons website it's not in an app or an app store so your very first page is going to be a general instruction so now your general instruction is going to tell model blades motor so on and so forth go out go ahead and fill this out so we're going to go to t-rex 470 blades are going to be a line tail blades are a line motor type a line motor controller is a line Power supply is none. Now, cyclic servos, this is an important step. So you're going to scroll through here till we have, we find the DS5, or 450s is what I got. DS450 on cyclic. And then it's going to register that. So it's going to help set your parameters and set your servo hertz and frequency for you. Tail servo, we have the 455. We're going to select, you hear it dancing, you heard the beep, beep, beep. That means that it has registered those servos. Transmitter type, we're gonna go ahead and select Spectrum because we are using a Spectrum satellite. So now the next step. This is going to be how your icon is positioned. So now my icon is positioned top up, wires back. Okay, so I'm going to select top up, wires back, which is this one. Now, depending on how you have your icon is how you're going to select which way your icon is selected. So now the next menu, we're gonna select the receiver type. So now if you guys have seen any of my 470 videos, you know that I run a single DSMX satellite in the bottom of my 470 down there. I run the antennas out the side. So now we are going to select a Spectrum DSMX 11 millisecond receiver. So now it did its dance to know that it has found the spectrum receiver. So now we already have the radio set up. So now we're going to go to spectrum bind. It's going to tell us to turn off the transmitter, cycle power to the unit by disconnecting the cable, and then the LEDs will blink. So we're going to hit OK. It is going to exit us out. We are going to unplug USB unplug power and get our radio ready for bind mode. So now we have my Spectrum IX12 here. We are gonna go to bind mode and then we are going to plug in the helicopter. So we're gonna plug it in. It's gonna automatically start flashing. As you can see here, it is flashing. That is telling me it's in bind mode. And I'm going to go on my radio and I'm going to push and hold bind. Binding. Bind complete DSMX 11 milliseconds. It found it. We are binded up. So now our radio is binded up. We can go ahead, plug in our USB cable again, and open up the icon app. Okay, next step now. Now this is going to be an important menu, and I highly suggest that you read this menu. Uh, Google it before you start your, your icon build. This is going to tell you what each individual servo does. So as you can see, this is going to give you a wash plate layout, okay? And it's going to tell you what servo goes to what. Now, tail servo is easy. Tail servo is always going to go to servo 4 on the icon itself or the brain FBL unit. Throttle for ESC or throttle servo is always going to go into channel, channel 1. So channel one is going to always be throttle if you are using this as a receiver with the Spectrum DSMX satellites or DSM2 satellites. So now your servo layout. So you're going to want to look here and right here is going to be the swash plate type that we are using. So 
we're going to look at our helicopter and we're going to see here on the 470. Okay. So on the 470, you're going to look at your swash plate. If this is going to be servo three, servo one, and servo two. So it's going to go one, two, three. And that is where you're going to put into your icon itself. So again, it's going to be servo one on the right side, servo two in the back, servo three on the left side. So now we're going to make sure that we select that in our next setup point here. But we can skip over this part for now. So now we move on to the next menu. Now this is going to be your transmitter menu and this is an important step that you need to do. So you notice here we're going to move the aileron stick and it's going to show negative 73%. It's positive 73%. So on your ailerons, your elevator, and your rudder, you need it to be 100% both ways. So how you do that is go into your radio, and it doesn't matter which radio you're using, it's gonna be the same. You're gonna to go to servo setup, and you're gonna to go to travel, and you are going to extend your aileron, elevator, and rudder travel, your high and your low. So we're going to go to our aileron. We're going to go to the right and we are going to extend this until we get to 100% and it will turn green when we get there. So now we're at 100% and we're going to do the same for the left side. We're going to extend it until we get to 100% in the actual software. We want to see 100, 100, and 100. So we have 100, we have 100. Now we need to do the same for elevator. We need to do 100. So we need to extend this until we get to 100%. And the same for 100%. And then of course do the same on rudder. And those are the only three. You don't need to worry about pitch. So we have 100% back. We have 100% forward. We have 100% right. And we have 100% left. And then do the same on your rudder of course. Now we have 100% nose right. 100% nose left. We have 100% forward. 100% backwards. 100% to the right. And 100% to the left. And again, we just did that inside the servo travel menu of the transmitter. Now, don't worry about any of the other menus. I know they'll tell you in here that you need to make them all positive and negative 100, but you don't need to worry about that. So now, and we're gonna back out of that menu in your transmitter. Now we're gonna move on to the next step. Now this is the swash plate setup. So this is what makes it important to what you're selecting. So you need to tell the icon what swash plate we are using. So we are using the HR-3 120 degrees. Again, like we said, servo one, servo two, servo three, that is our swash plate layout, and that's what it is. If you're using a different helicopter, this is on something else, go through, find your swash plate layout, and then select that, and then which way your rotor head actually rotates. So we have clockwise and counterclockwise. Most all helicopters are going to be a clockwise rotation rotor head, but there is probably a few out there that are counterclockwise. That's why the options there. So now next step, servos. So now we have digital 1520-333, and then you're going to select a digital 1520-165, I believe it is. Now if you don't know what it is, okay, and th this step is very important, you need to make sure that your servo hertz frequency is set properly. So now you see a 1520-50 hertz, a 1520-165 hertz, and a 1520-333 hertz. We don't know which one it is, right? We're just going to select one. We select this one. But that could be wrong. So let's double check. So there's a servo chart menu. Now you're going to go down and you're going to see right here a line DS450. It is a 1520 center pulse, but refresh rate is 200. So it's a good thing we caught that. So now we're gonna go down here to where we can manually move it. And we're gonna manually move this till we get to 200. And this is gonna make sure that your servos are set properly. In improperly doing this or doing it wrong is extremely bad because it will burn your servos up. If you have the wrong center pulse and the wrong hertz set in your menu, you will burn a servo up. 
So now let's double check the tail, even though we're 15, 23, 33, let's double check. Again, we have the DS455 on the tail. So we're at a 15, 23, 33. So that is correct, but our cyclic was not. So it needs to be 15, 20, 200 Hertz. We'll move on to the next step. So now it's gonna get this warning and it's gonna say unit cannot center check mode because throttle is not at zero, which is correct. Throttle is not at zero. So normal. In your regular radio mode, your throttle is not at zero. So you throttle, this is the only time you use trim. You're going to throttle trim down till that mode goes away. But now when we're in hold mode, which is what we want to be in for setup, unless you unplug the motor, go into your radio, go into your hold setup, and set a negative value on throttle curve. So you're going to go to your throttle curve. You're going to go to your hold and just set a negative value of, say, 10. Okay. So now the menu is gone. And you can tell because of the way the servos jitter. So what I'm talking about is the servos, when you are in the proper mode, will jitter. So they will jump as you move the cyclic forward, positive and negative. So now we are going to start with the servo reversing, this menu right here. So now we're going to move our collective and you're gonna see the servos don't move like they should. And this is the jitter I was talking about. So when you're at mid stick, should be nothing there. So now, okay, our servos don't move like they should, right? That's not positive and negative. So you're gonna come down here to this servo reverse and you're gonna click it one time. Try that. Oh, we got positive, we got negative. We have our right and our left is backwards and our forward and back is backwards. But that's okay. So we go to, we can go in here and reverse it, but let's just go through the menu one more time. And we're gonna reverse this reversal right here. Okay, our servos are backwards again. Reverse it again. Our servos are backwards again. They're backwards again. Still backwards. Our, our stick movement is right, but our collective is backwards. So that's going to be negative. It's going to be positive. Actually, no, it's right. Because you can double check by grabbing a blade and seeing which way this is. So we know that the blade leading edge down is going to be negative pitch leading edge up is going to be positive pitch so we are correct here now that's positive pitch that's negative pitch and no we are backwards so i was wrong reverse it again still backwards so now we are correct positive pitch negative pitch but our ailerons and elevator is backwards. And now we know that we know that that's right because in the menu here, when we go back to transmitter setup, when we push the stick forward, it's going back. So now we go into our model setup, into servo setup. We are gonna go to reverse. We need to reverse elevator and ailerons. And then we need to look, it's going to be, and our rudder is backwards as well, so let's reverse rudder. So now we know backwards, forward, left, and right. Okay, so now we need to double check something now. Okay, so make sure, because if you just reverse the servos in the radio, but it's reversed in this menu on the icon right here, your actual gyro direction will not work. So exit out of that menu for a second. See, we just went back a menu and picked the helicopter up. Now tilt the tail or nose down. The swash plate should go backwards. Nose up. The swash plate should constantly fight. So if I take the helicopter and I tilt it to the left, the swash plate goes right. If I go right, the swash plate goes left. If I tilt nose down, the swash plate goes backwards. If I tilt nose up, the swash plate goes forward. So now we know everything is correct. And we okay, can now that we know gyro direction is correct and we know that our servo travel is correct. 
Now, this is where you would put your swash plate leveler on the head. Now, I already know that my swash plate is level because this helicopter was set up previously with the Micro Beast, but we're gonna double check and we are going to make sure that our servos are 90, which they are. That swash plate is dead level. So we don't, I don't need to do this, but you as you were going through, what you're gonna do is you're going to positive and negative. So each your servo one, servo two, servo three. Again, remember, servo one, servo two, servo three. So you're gonna up and down each one of these three positive and negatives until you get your servos at 90 degrees where they're at right now. And then you're gonna put your leveler on and mechanically adjust each linkage. Now remember, these are a left and right-handed thread. So as you screw clockwise, it's gonna push up. You screw counterclockwise, it's gonna go down. So that's how you adjust your servos. Now we need we need zero pitch at mid stick. That's gonna be the next step right now is we're going to adjust pitch and do zero at mid stick. So now we're gonna throw the blades back on the helicopter. I recommend unplugging the motor and let's make sure we have zero pitch at mid stick. So we have the pitch gauge on the helicopter. And again, this was already a set up helicopter. So I know all my swash plates level, my pitch is zero at mid stick but you want the boom to be parallel with the tail or the blade to be parallel with the tail boom. You want it. This is also how you track your blades. You don't have to put tape on, take off, hover. Don't need to do any of that. Use a pitch gauge. Make sure you zero it out on something level. I set it on top of the FBL unit. That's usually the most level spot of the helicopter or on top of the motor and level my pitch gauges that way. So we know we have zero pitch at mid stick on our blades. Now, you do one blade, rotate the other blade, put the pitch gauge on it, and that's how you check for zero and make sure both blades are dead even. Again, they're dead even. I already done this. If they're not, you are going to adjust your linkage here and here to get that once your swash plate is level. Now we're going to go for positive and negative pitch. So we have 10.9 degrees of negative, or 11 degrees of negative, and we have 12.9 two degrees 12.1 degrees of positive now this is a step i don't see anybody else touch on and i've seen some questions so now i'm going to go negative and i'm going you can do it one way i'm going to go negative and i'm going to go on the side of the the app or the software and i'm going to up this till i get to 13 and a half degrees i went too far so i'm at 14 13.8, 13.5 degrees of collective on negative. But when I go positive, we're at 14.1 degrees. So now you're going to try to adjust the actual software again. So let's just try it. We're going to adjust it down, hitting the negative till we get to 13.5 degrees, right? Good. But when we go back negative, we only have 11.7 degrees. What do you do? So go always check which one's going to be less, the positive or negative. I like to do one or the other. It does not matter. So we're going to, in the negative side, again, we are negative on our pitch stick. We're going to go 13 and a half degrees again, or close 13.6. So now again, when we go positive, we have 14, we have a degree more. We don't have a actual linear pitch setup. So what we're going to do is we are going to go onto our radio we are going to go to servo travel this is why i said it doesn't make a difference about the positive and negative 100 in the very first part of the setup so we're going to go to servo setup we are going to go to servo travel and we are going to go to pitch so now we know what we need we need to take positive out so we're going to look at our pitch gauge it's hard for you to see, but it says 14.7 degrees. And we are going to take pitch away until we get the setting that we want. Oh, did that backwards. So we're going to go back to 13 and a half degrees. And then now we're going to take pitch away until we get to 13 and a half degrees and that will give us a linear pitch curve. I don't know if you can see that, but it says 13.5 and we have 13.5. Go 
go back to negative. Now we have a linear pitch curve of 13.5 degrees collective. Now it is the only way that I have found to get a, a perfect linear pitch curve. Okay, now we did that, we can move on to the cyclic part. So at mid stick again, you're gonna wanna go right and left until you're at six degrees or 10 degrees. Until you are at, I usually set it to 10 degrees. So we go left, we have 10 degrees, we are good to go. So now we move on to the next step. Also make sure you don't have any binding. So go through the cyclic range, okay? And make sure that you don't have any binding on the actual cyclic setup. So we're gonna go to full, but rotate your, your servos all the way around, make sure they're not hitting. Mine are, so I'm going to take a little bit of cyclic throw out here. Okay, no hitting, no hitting. See how the elevator servo is hitting right here? So I'm gonna hold this forward. And in the menu, take a little bit of cyclic throw out. And what the menu I'm talking about is this side right here. So I'm just adjusting that to make sure that I don't have any binding on my cyclic. Because you don't want to put the servos in a stall. Make sure both sides are good. Full range and we are good to go. Let's move on to the so next, next step. Next step is going to be tail servo set up. So now you're gonna have a plus and a minus. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to hold the rudder stick over each direction and you're gonna see how far, okay? So this is going to be the rudders backwards, but we'll fix that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our radio real quick. Servo setup. Let's reverse the rudder. Okay, rudder is the right direction now. We're gonna back out. So now when we go right rudder, we don't have any travel. So we're going to hit the plus until we get the proper amount of travel. So we're gonna hold right, hit the plus, and keep going until we get to right before it completely bottoms out. Good, go left. We're gonna back off. Okay, and then here we are going to center our servo. So it's stick in the middle, we need to center the servo. We are good. Our center stick in the actual servo itself. All right, so I've touched on this in a bunch of other videos, but when I set my tail on any of my helicopters, regardless what helicopter it is, make, model, brand, fly ball, this doesn't matter. I do my servo at 90 degrees, and then I make sure we set it centered here. So to set center of your servo, you know, to fine tune it, you leave your rudder stick in the middle, or, you know, in between, just leave it alone. And then you're gonna plus or minus until you get that servo 90 degrees. Perfect. So now we're gonna come back here to our tail blades. And I like to have about two to four degrees of right rudder at center stick. So the bottom tail blade towards the boom, top tail blade away from the boom. That's how I like to set my rudder and my tail up. So now we'll notice we have no binding. Right, we're good. Left, we're good. And again, you move the stick all the way over, hold it and hit the plus and minus button until you get it almost to where it binds, back it off a little okay, bit. So now we need to go exit to the next menu. So. We're going to go to the actual blade size selection. Now, this is an important menu because this is going to give a preset determination of cyclic gain. So we're going to go two blade because we're running a two blade head and we are going to go 325. And because it's already selected, because we set, remember, the original setup here gives the icon a predetermined. So if you don't select any of this, then you have to manually go over here, but we did, so it automatically selected because we put 470, 325, and 385. Now this is the menu that you're gonna check your tail sensor direction. So we're going to look at the tail here, and if we push 
the the nose or pull the nose right we should get left it's going to go in the direction the nose is going so that's going to give us left rudder push the nose left we should get right rudder so our direction is correct if it was not right you would reverse it right here so if it was not correct you would reverse right here on this servo but we are correct so we're going to move on to the next step which is going to be the auto level rescue and selecting a flight mode setup so now you can see nothing is happening so we're flipping switches nothing is happening so we need to go to channel assign so let's go ahead and do all that all right so in your transmitter to make your flight modes and rescue work you're going to go to channel or model setup channel assign however it is in your transmitter we need channel assign okay we're going to proceed to shut off the rf signal now we need input configuration not port assignment so the flight modes to make your three modes work which is going to be those three right there one two three is going to be auxiliary two so we are going to go to auxiliary two and we're going to flip i want it on my b switch so b switch auxiliary three is going to be the rescue so I want auxiliary three, which will be my rescue switch on my back A switch. So now, if we exit out of this menu, we should have, we flip rescue, the bottom one goes out. Okay, we flip through our B switch, our flight modes, we should have, but now this is backwards because I want rescue to be flipped when I go towards me. So, then what we do is we go into channel servo setup and channel reverse. So now we need to reverse channel or auxiliary two and we need to reverse auxiliary three. So now when I flip rescue towards me, it should light the bottom. And when I flip my three flight modes, it should cycle through. So now we did that, it's set up correctly. So I don't use auto level, I don't use any uh, of that. But I do like rescue, is a backup switch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to, it says use auto level, use rescue. Okay, so now these three, if you wanted auto level, you would select which one you want auto level on. So now we know when we flip rescue, we can actually, actually watch it. So look, we flip it, that's positive pitch and it slowly durations back down to your last setting. So we know rescue is working and you can go ahead and adjust things like how long you want it to keep the pitch on for, how much pitch, so on and so forth. But I personally find that the stock way it is, is perfect. So now we're gonna move on to the next step here, which is going to be, if you wanna use the governor, that's when you would set this up. I don't use the governor in the FBL. Now our next step is going to be flying style. So now, what I like to do here is, depending, I have my three different flight modes. So basically, I do, for normal mode, I do a sport mode. And then for stunt one, I do the acro mode, and stunt two, I do the 3D mode. So now this is just gonna give the amount of actual servo travel. So if you notice, in normal mode, we're out of sport mode. We don't have a lot of quick servo movement. We go out of idle up one, it's a little quicker. And we go to idle up two, it's a lot quicker. So now we have officially completed the main menu of the wizard. So now this is going to be to check your direction again. So of course we already checked it, but we'll do it again. Correct, correct. Again, remember, if you tilt the helicopter to the right, swash plate goes left. Tilt the helicopter to the left, swash plate goes right. You tilt nose down, swash plate goes back. Nose up, swash plate goes back. Okay, tail, again, tail direction. And another way to check this is you can fold the blade down. So if I go nose right, I should get left. And if I go left, I should get right. So we know everything is working correction incorrectly. And if you don't know, go read it. Okay, read through each individual menu. Check. This will give you a perfect representation of what the swash plate should be doing and what the tail should be doing. 
So now we are done with the main wizard, right? But we are gonna go into advanced menus. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, I highly suggest you just stay out of the advanced menu. Everything you need is right here in this wizard. You don't ever need to leave this wizard, but I'm gonna show you how I set my helicopters up. Okay, so now we have finished our wizard menu. So now you are done. Go fly. You can exit out of this icon menu and you go. Go enjoy the helicopter. You are ready to fly. But now, personally, I go to advanced menus. Now, this is going to be a little bit of complication for people that especially don't know what you're doing. So I recommend just staying out of the advanced menu, but I'm going to give you my setup and what I do. So I go to setup, cyclic. Now, usually all your gains are going to be pretty good right off the bat. If you need to adjust any of them, always put your mouse cursor over the gain and it is going or over the item that you're looking at. And it is going to read and tell you what each individual menu and selection does. So this parameter sets how fast the system responds to inputs. A high P gain will give you a more locked feeling, but may result in aileron oscillation, and a low P gain value may result in cyclic feeling slow and spongy. So if you're having an issue and you notice that you know your cyclic feels a little spongy, you can go to your P gain. Okay, this is what it is, up it a little bit. So I leave the gains alone until I fly. Rotation speed. So now for setup three, which is going to be my all out 3D mode, rotation speed is at 420. I am going to up it to 550 to start and I'll probably go higher than that. But I like a very fast helicopter. So we're gonna to go to 550 on aileron and elevator. So now we're gonna grab this, go to 550. And then our aileron and elevator are done for rotation speed. So now that's gonna give me a really fast cyclic. Oh, we are at 558, let's drop it down to 550. Okay, so now everything else I'm gonna leave alone, okay? I'm gonna leave it alone. I might up my setup yeah, I'm going to up this to 420, 430. We'll just go to 430. And I and I I do a base setting. I kind of just go by what I know and what I've done on all my helicopters. And every helicopter is going to have a different rotation speed. Okay, so now we're going to go to tail. And for tail gain, I'll go ahead and show you guys here for what I did as a base setup for gyro. I have a base number of 605940. Now this was with the micro beast, so I this might be really high with the icon. I don't know. We won't know till we fly. So my gain is set in the transmitter, but you're gonna have again rotation speed. You're gonna have your cyclic and your pitch precompensation. Now what this does is again read it. If you're flying and you punch it out and the tail starts to walk a little bit left or right, you need to add some tail pitch. So that way, as you apply cyclic pitch, it applies tail pitch. So this is all stuff that you mess with after you fly the helicopter. And now input. You're going to go into input. And this is going to be where your cyclic dead band, your tail stick dead band, your exponential, your lightning, and your pitch pump. Now pitch pump is the overall shoot applied. So I like to run pitch pump because as I come out of a hard cyclic maneuver or quick on the cyclic, it'll automatically give me pitch and then bring it down. So for example, if I have 12 degrees of pitch set and I go to a fast maximum pitch level, it's gonna go to 13 degrees for a short period and then it'll resume back to the 12 degrees or what I set it to. So again, I'm going to add an idle up to, I'm gonna add five to start with, and then everything else I'm going to leave alone. Now, pitch lightning is a very cool thing that they just added. And this sets the pitch command behavior, negative exponential values, which will make the pitch common command response softer around center. The greater the negative value is, the softer around center the command will be. The positive exponential values will make the pitch command responsive around center. So if you want a super fast cyclic around center stick, which is what I like, I recommend upping. So I do 10 in normal mode and I do 15 in 
idle up, or I'm sorry, 10 in idle up one and 15 in idle up two. And again, these are all base settings. So now this is where I'm gonna go fly. So I'm gonna go fly the helicopter, come back and tune as need be. Now we are done with our setup. We can just go ahead and we are completely finished. We can go ahead and exit out of the menu now. It is automatically saved. We can throw our blades back on the helicopter and go fly. Now, I like this little remote USB. I'll put a little bit of Velcro, stick it to the frame until I get done with my tuning flights, and then I unplug and I don't need it no more, and it keeps it clean, and I can put the icon where I want it. So I'm going to unplug, put a piece of Velcro on there, and go fly and see what happens. If I like, if I like what it is, I will save this file and I'll email it to anybody who would like it, uh, but I'm not gonna email the file until I finish the actual flight performance and tuning. So I know Jeff Mayo, I will be sending you this file too. I'm gonna change it a little bit for you, but I hope this video helps anybody out there that wanted to know about icon setup. It's gonna be the same basic idea for whatever helicopter you are putting it in. So there you guys go. The 470 finally got an icon. I hope this has helped some of you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, take care, and have a great day.